All right guys, welcome to this video. So what I wanna talk about today is Ford McMobile Home Park, a 22 lot park listing that I have in the Stanton, Virginia MSA in a town called Craigsville. This is a stabilized, all tenant owned, 100% occupied deal on city utilities that are built back to the tenants, newly paved roads. Really, this is a park that's perfect for you. If one, you're a first time buyer looking to get into the industry with in place cash flow and not a heavy lift, this would be perfect for you. If you're a local owner that already has real estate around the Stanton MSA and you want something that, again, is stabilized and would be a, a great bolt-on with management in place already, this is for you. And then if you're someone that's just looking to expand your portfolio because you own parks in the area, I think this would be a great candidate as well. So like I mentioned, 22 lots, city utilities, paved roads. But what I'm gonna do in this video is go over general vicinity of the area, talk about financials of the park, and then talk about what you're overall returns and rental growth is going to look like for this deal. So very first thing, let's talk about the area. So Stanton, Virginia is northwestern side. It's not a major MSA of Virginia, but it's also not a bad dying market. You do have population growth, job growth, and rent growth. Median home values in the area are around $250,000. For those of you that don't know, $250,000 is a really good metric for median home values because it means there is an inherent demand for affordable housing. We also have a, a slightly lower than average median income here, which also plays into more demand for affordable housing. Uh, I think this would be a good candidate for anyone that owns parks in West Virginia or Virginia, kind of in this area. Or a first time buyer, the current owner of this park, he is out of state. So he has management in place. So no matter where you live, this would make sense for you. Getting into the package, if you wanna download any of these financials, there's either a link in the description of this video or if you're watching this off of my email blast, then you'll see the links there how you can download this package, rent rolls, profit loss statements and everything. So let's go over some pictures. You guys could see this is a very clean layout run community, nice newly paved roads down the middle. You have good spacing between all of these homes, so you could likely increase the density if you wanted to get more lots in there. There also is 11 vacant, eight, or 12 vacant acres appraised at $11,000 per acre. We do have that appraisal in the file vault. <clears throat> and this being in the county and not necessarily the city of Craigsville, it's essentially open zoning. You could develop out whatever you want there. With that being said, there is a park within the city limits of Craigsville about 10 minutes away, and they are currently building up more lots and bringing in homes, which is showing that there's more demand for homes in this area. Another park's already doing it. You're in an even more lenient area of town to where you could develop out not only more mobile home lots, but you could do self-storage, you could do, there's a whole variety of things you could do on this land. And again, you have 11 or 12 vacant acres. <clears throat> Look at here, more pictures. You guys can see it's overall just a clean looking park. Home inventory there, they're all tenant owned. Yeah, they're on, the, they're on the older side. It's not like some 2010 newer park, but it is a very clean, well-run community. Let's get straight into financials. Well, you can see here, Stanton has a ton of major retailers. Like I mentioned, it's a, it's a good market. You got Walmart's nearby, Applebee's, uh, General Dollar, Food Lion, TJ Maxx, Tractor Supply Co, Old Navy, Kroger, Starbucks, you know, all the things that you look for within a real estate market. <clears throat> And this is what the land looks like. You have all the park here, and then straight up, you have another, an additional 12 vacant acres. Like I mentioned, you can build whatever you want. I do recommend if you wanted to expand this out, you would just build out this road. You could put more mobile home lots here. And then at the end, I think a storage unit facility would be a really good, relatively cheap infill play to try and drive more revenue. So overall, we got 22 total units. At the time of this package, at 22 and then one park on home that was going to be sold. It is sold now and there is a tenant in there, a true tenant owned home, not a rent to own, not a lease to own, none of that. True tenant owned, 22 lots, fully occupied, all of them at $390 a month. Going over just typical expenses. So city utilities, it is master metered. You have both a $37 water bill back and a $34 sewer bill back. So that comes out to $71 a month on top of the $390 lot rents with that you come out to 102 in mh site rent water sewer income a little under twenty thousand nine hundred dollars miscellaneous i plugged in a, a bad debt factor here of two percent so we have one hundred twenty thousand dollars in gross income and this column is going to be the actual seller's true t12 expense or t12 income and expenses it is lower here because he increased the occupancy over time we do have updated t12s that we don't have in the package but you guys will get access to that 
all of his income and his expenses do line up with exactly how we adjusted it on our, our end to reflect the current rent roll. So taxes, 1965 Make sure you keep in mind it could be reassessed. Insurance, 2500 We did $115 a unit. Seller's actual expenses, 2400 Staffing, we plugged in 400 a month. I'll talk about his actual management in, in a second. He does have two guys on site, or one guy on site. General admin, yada, yada. Water sewer, we kept exactly the same. Actually, we just performed it up for that one additional lot. So this is true and actual. Trash, grounds maintenance, repairs and maintenance, 6% management fee that we plugged in there. Overall, 39% expense ratio off of 120000 Pretty standard for what you'd expect with an all-tenant-owned city utility community that's built back to the residents. Let's talk about returns based on asking price. So we had to update this in the package, but this is the cap rate with this appraised developable land backed out. Uh, seller wants to sell this all together. So let's just look at cap rates based on the actual NOI and the asking price. So right now we have 73,152 divided by 950,000 asking price. That's a 7.7% cap rate. And then now if we do that by 73,152 divided by 900, that's north of an 8% cap rate for an all tenant owned home, city utility community in a growing market. Now, if you were to buy this, likely you're gonna go through a local bank. The current lender on this facility or current lender on this deal, they are interested in financing it again. And then there is also another bank interested in financing it that the seller spoke with when he was looking to refinance this before. We think, honestly, you're probably gonna beat out these reasonable financing terms, but we were underwriting this with a 70% loan to value. 7.75% interest rate, 25 year amortization. I think you're gonna get closer to a seven and a quarter interest rate because right now on February 6th, the 10 year and the five year treasury are hovering in the mid, around mid threes, mid to high threes. You're probably looking at 250 basis points above that. So you're probably gonna land around seven and a quarter percent interest rate. So if you guys are underwriting your numbers, I recommend being somewhere in this range, I would probably go slightly higher interest rate. Um, <clears throat> Let's talk about property questionnaire. So within our file vault, we have this one form called a property questionnaire. I recommend read the offering memorandum and this property questionnaire because it's gonna answer pretty much every single question that you could think of. So this guy bought it in 2019. He bought it as a foreclosure. Since he owned it, he paved the roads, filled a few of the lots, started building back water, sold off homes to the tenants. And then he did a ton of CapEx on sewer lines. So there's no deferred maintenance. He's unturned or turned over every stone and the, the owner of this property really did a great job cleaning this park up. <clears throat> so here's 12 acres that can be developed into more pads. We do have confirmation from the county that that is uh, acceptable. As far as management now, so the seller has two part-time guys. He recommends you guys keep them on. They're really great managers. One is an on-site manager. He gets free lot rent. He still pays his water and sewer each month and then he just oversees the park, sends notices out, pretty standard. The other guy is both a hired out as needed contractor and he happens to be the trash pickup guy. So he gets $150 a month and then any additional work, he'll just get paid hourly anywhere from 12 to 15 bucks an hour, depending on what it is. Like I mentioned, seller recommends that you guys keep them on. They are great sellers out of town. And as you can see from the pictures, they definitely do a good job managing it. <clears throat> Getting back to it. Uh, no amenities, so you have no risk there from an insurance perspective. Paved roads, so he completely repaid the community two years ago with two inch overlay, which is why the roads look really good. 22 are occupied, ignore the 21 now. Gravel parking lots, you could fit one to two cars per. There's no necessarily street parking, but some people do park on the street. All of the tenants in there do have background checks, credit checks, standard application, and make sure there are no felonies, sex offenders, or evictions. So every year, or technically, he went from 360 to 390 in his last rental increase, 30 bucks a month. He believes you could actually go into the mid 400s. I think that is true too. So in Staunton or Stanton, as they say, the average typical one bedroom apartment is around $900. So when a typical ratio you could take for market lot rents will be 50% of your typical one bedroom in a given market. If it's a really major MSA, you can go higher than that but typical market like this. So I think 425, 435, 450, I think that is a realistic place you can take rents fairly quickly. All the tenants either pay through online on Rent Manager 
or they deposit checks at Farmers and Merchants Bank, who coincidentally is the bank that has the debt on this property as well. So if you guys are looking for debt quotes, I recommend you call them first. All rents collected on the first of the month, considered late on the fifth. As far as utilities and infrastructure, all of the water lines, it's a mix of cast iron and ABS. He's never had any issues with the water lines. They are city utilities. And then as far as the sewer lines, he did tons of improvements, replaced a ton of them with PVC. And again, no deferred maintenance here. Everything is good to go for this park. <clears throat> also, seller has all good financials on this profit. Loss statements, tax returns, bank records, utility bills, half the park are on leases. He even has the original site plans from 1986. It's nothing modern, they're like handwritten plans. But the point is, this is a clean, fully occupied, tenant owned, city utilities, build back to the tenants, financeable, clean financials. It's about as straightforward of a deal as possible. It's you could get it for north of an 8% cap rate. So if you guys are interested in this deal, I recommend that you reach out to me ASAP. We're gonna announce a call for offers date soon if I have not already on this email. So if you have any questions, like I mentioned, otherstreetadvisors.com or mhpvalley.com, you could call me. My cell phone's within the email or you can email me at armand at mhpvalue.com. All of these financials can be downloaded both on the links in the description or the links on this email. Appreciate you guys watching. I hope you guys like my new office, by the way. I got an office in Tampa, Florida. So that's why I'm dressed up and we have a little bit of a background, some decorations and stuff. Still waiting for some more furniture, so bear with me. Hope you guys enjoy this video. Thank you for watching.